13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. New York has a new problem. Rated R. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my rant on what I personally find to be the worst film in the Friday the 13th franchise. Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. More like Jason takes a fucking boat on its way to Vancouver, Canada. Because it it really is not Jason in New York. That's misleading and bullshit advertising. Now, the film is directed by Rob Hedden, who prior to this directed some episodes of Friday the 13th, the series... And apparently Paramount decided that was enough to give him the reins for this franchise. I do not know why that's the case. Uh, especially when it comes to the franchise being at a point where it really needed some new life and some genuine talent to really breathe new life into the franchise. But I guess they thought Rob Hedden was it. I don't know why. Because it definitely doesn't show up on the camera. Um, now, when it comes to his writing abilities, it doesn't seem like he's that adept at that skill either. But apparently he, would, he had some good ideas. And a Paramount thought they were good enough to give him full reign and full control except they didn't really give him full control because they didn't give him enough money to be able to do the idea that he presented to them in the first place so in some ways i do feel for rob because i don't feel he was given a fair shake by paramount they basically jerked him off but at the same time i don't feel that from what i've seen from his ability as a director i don't think that if he was given more money so he could shoot in new york i don't think the films would have been that much better i think it still probably would have been bad because rob Hedden to me is a bad director and he's not that great of a writer either so he's the one that came up with the concept of having Jason on a boat, because that's an idea he had uh, at one point, to have the entire film take place on a boat and feature Jason in the lower decks uh, stalking and killing teenagers. Then he had this idea that was much more ambitious about Jason going to New York City because he was tired of Jason being in Crystal Lake. So... He had this idea of taking Jason to the Big Apple. And with his idea and his original screenplay, apparently the one that got him the job, Jason would have sequences at Times Square, at the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, he would go through all these different shops and malls in the city. He would have a sequence at Maddox Madison Square Garden. There would also be a scene where Jason would jump off the top of the Statue of Liberty. But none of that ever really happens with the finished film. So either his ideas and his original script was too ambitious or he just decided to throw everything he possibly could in the screenplay in terms of New York landmarks, but completely forgot that it would have cost the studio way more money than they were more than likely ever going to give him to direct that movie and to make that movie happen so in some ways i do feel like i said i do feel for rob but in other ways i think he bit off more than he could chew period in the first place there was no way that they were going to be able to make that version of jason takes manhattan to begin with paramount was pretty much pretty much done with this franchise uh they really didn't want that much to do with it at this point they just looked at it as a cheap cash grab and and that and it really does show but you know what's funny 
is even though this this sequel is the epitome of a cheap cash grab in so many different ways paramount gave rob hedden and company the most money that any friday the 13th filmmaker cast or crew had to work with for any of the paramount films yes you heard that right none of the other paramount films before jason takes manhattan had a budget as big as the one that was given to this sequel it cost around 5.1 to 5.5 million dollars and it looks worse and cheaper than any of the other sequels from the Paramount series. Like how? How do you have $5 million and make a sequel that looks like it's the cheapest and lowest budgeted sequel in the franchise? Probably because you give Rob Hedden, who's a fucking hack and doesn't know how to direct that well and is really one of those guys who's better suited for staying inside the box that's relegated to television shows that's probably why rob hedden doesn't know how to work with a big budget he doesn't know how to create sequences and direct in ways that make a film look like a feature event he doesn't know how to do that he doesn't have enough talent he doesn't have enough ability so what he knows is directing episodes of syndicated television. And as a result, this looks like an episode of a syndicated television show. Five million dollars. Five million fucking dollars. And it never shows up on the screen. Because there's never a moment where this movie looks like it costs that much to make. It doesn't look like it has the highest production values to date for the franchise. It looks like the opposite, because Rob Hedden sucks. No offense to the guy personally, but from what I've seen, he sucks as a director. There's a reason he didn't do that much after this. He, his direction suffers from the same issues that so many other below average, below par directors suffer from who are able to turn in adequate work for TV shows but aren't able to rise above the median or the average line for a feature film. They're not even able to get to an average point for a theatrical film because they don't have it in them. Every scene in this film has this look and this style to it that's super fucking cheap. It honestly reminded me of Jaws the Revenge and how cheap and rushed things look. And inexperienced the direction is. There are so many shots in this that would have been improved immensely with a better director. In terms of the atmosphere, in terms of the mood... In terms of the pacing, the pacing is really one of the biggest things here. Rob Hedden sucks as a director when it comes to pace and timing. Look no further than the fight scene between Julius and Jason. Julius is going at him with all these punches, and Rob Hedden's direction is so shitty in that scene. It completely takes away all the impact of the sequence. It's supposed to be a fun scene that's supposed to have a lot of punch to it, but instead it feels like he's playing with pillow gloves. And it's pathetic because there's too many shots that are shot from way too far away. There's not enough up-close shots to really feel the impact. The scene is, is too long. That's a huge issue with that sequence. It takes forever to get to its big moment when Jason knocks the guy's head off so by the time he does knock his head off it has all the impact of a wet fart when it should have the impact of a serious uppercut but that doesn't happen because Rob Hedden doesn't know how to direct sequences like this properly 
And then you have stuff like in the sewer, which is just putrid and laughable. I don't know what he's doing half the time with some of these uh, really questionable decisions as a director with angles, bobbing the camera up and down like he, he's filming it in the middle of the ocean. I don't know what that... I understand why he did that. He was trying to create some more mood and atmosphere because the boat was stranded and it was on choppy waters. So he wanted to recreate that. And there is a place for that if you are going to limit how you use that so it's more effective like for instance if he had that uh camera work and sequences where jason is stalking somebody or kills somebody and he uses it to create a certain eerie mood or atmosphere that's one thing but that, that he uses it in scenes where people are just walking around and talking it's just distracting and it makes you sick to your stomach and makes you want to barf so i don't understand why he made that decision i don't understand why he shoots so many scenes that look like they are an episode of friday the 13th the series or an episode of freddy's nightmares there are a lot of shots in this that look like it should be in a nightmare on elm street movie because of all the lurid colors what is up with scenes with fog in the middle of the fucking boat like the fog with the pirates from John Carpenter's The Fog showed up and then Freddy decided to also tag along because of all the green and red and purple and pink colors. What the fuck are you doing, Rob Hedden? This is a Friday the 13th film. This is not a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I mean, there's shots in this and there's script elements in this that would have been in an episode of freddy's nightmares this girl who's having nightmares of this boy who keeps showing up and asking her for her help it's just like what the fuck are you doing rob you fucking knob i mean how did you get really how did you get this far yeah, you had some good ideas, but what, did you give somebody some head? Is that how you were able to get the job as writer and director for this? Because I don't understand. I don't see any of it. I don't see why he got was the one that was the right guy for the job. And the direction, it, it's it's bad, but it's nothing compared to the really disgraceful, absolutely ridiculously terrible screenplay i mean the idea itself of jason in the big city is fun but what he does with it is absolutely fucking nothing he shows up in the big city there's no memorable kills from him in the big city i'm sorry dumping a guy in toxic waste is fucking stupid to me what is jason the toxic avenger also why the fuck is there so much toxic waste in new york city the way that you the way that this screenplay shows toxic waste and shows the amount of toxic waste new yorkers would be fucking radioactive you'd have a bunch of new yorkers turning into the hulk or dying of fucking cancer by the minute because there's just truckloads of toxic waste. There's a sewer full of toxic waste. What? There's so many moments like that in this script that just make you go, what? What the fuck? Seriously, what the fuck is this? What are we doing? What is any of this shit? This doesn't make sense. This is stupid. These characters suck. Why does Jason have extreme teleportation powers in this? Why the fuck are you having scenes where this girl is having flash, not really flashbacks, but she's having hallucinations and dreams of boy Jason showing up asking her for her help? What, is Jason doing these murders against his will? What? None of that's ever really explained because this script fucking sucks. And Rob Hedden sucks as a writer. He sucks dick as a director and he sucks dick as a writer. And I know I said these characters suck and I mean it. They really do. Rennie is the worst offender of all because she is, to me personally, the worst final girl in the entire series. 
no personality, no charisma. The script gives her nothing to do except be really a damsel in distress and a moment of exposition or try to provide some half-assed connection between her and Jason because of her uh, magic psychic powers that are completely out of left field. You got this asshole principal guy who is just a prick who is really not much of anything. Uh, Charles McCulloch. You've got all these other teenagers who are interchangeable. Uh, the, the most entertaining and enjoyable ones, like the filmmaker guy and the rock star, they die pretty quick into the film so you're left with the most boring people as usual when it comes to the worst films in this series sean robertson i don't even remember a goddamn thing about that character other that he other than he was the son of the boat captain that's it and you have characters like jj who are really cool a punk rock chick who are wasted. She's literally the first one to get killed by Jason. If I remember correctly. You have this other guy who's just a deckhand. Who is just another iteration of Crazy Ralph. That's the third time we have Crazy Ralph. You're all doomed. Can you come up with some new fucking material already? Crazy Ralph wasn't that great to begin with. Why do we need him three, three times? Why do we need him here? It's a shitty red herring. Oh, he's the one that's killing people. No, he's fucking not. I know it's not him. Anybody with a brain would know it's not the deckhand. And it's Jason fucking Voorhees. <laughs> the sense of humor, completely unmemorable and unfunny. The stuff with Jason is laughable and just aggravating the kills are lame a lot of them are just rehashes of stuff from other films in the series jason kills a guy with kills a bunch of people with spear guns it was done better in part three and then you got other stuff like i mean I'm trying to think of any other... Well, Jason kills JJ with her guitar. There's some missed opportunities, like the filmmaker guy. It seems like he might get killed by his own camera. But no. Um, that That's something that you think would happen. But no, instead he just gets thrown into an electric, electrical panel and gets electrocuted. You could have had a cool shot where it's a POV of Jason grabbing the camera and smashing his head with it. Nope. Nope. That's not something that comes across Rob Hedden's mind. It's it's probably because he couldn't pull it off because he's not good a good enough filmmaker to make that look good or make that work. And you have other missed opportunities for, for good kills. Like, for instance, the sequence where uh, Kelly Who's character, uh, Eva, she's in a dance club on the ship. Jason just strangles her in the middle of the dance floor. There's a there's a giant disco ball literally right there hanging from the ceiling. Just why not smash her head into it? Something more dynamic and interesting than just Jason choking her. That's boring. That's lame. And there's other stuff like I'm not kidding with these tele teleportation powers, these extreme teleportation powers. There's this guy who's on the crow's nest and Jason was clearly way, way, way far away. And then in the next shot, Jason's already halfway up the ladder and then throws his ass off the crow's nest. And the guy gets impaled on some antenna. And I'm like, where, where the fuck did Jason come from? There's another shot, too, where it's insinuated that Jason was in a room with two other people because after they leave, after one of them leaves, Jason peeks his head out the door. How did they not know he was fucking in there? And how did he get in there to begin with? 
And the worst offender of all is the fucking ending where the two lead characters, the final girl and the final guy, the ones that ultimately are the survivors, not counting the fucking dog, they're in the sewer and there's a toxic waste dump that occurs at a certain time in the sewers of New York. <laughs> And Jason gets exposed to toxic waste. At, at this point, Jason is an undead zombie type character. Why the fuck would toxic waste do anything? Isn't he? Isn't there some kind of supernatural shit going on with him? Why would toxic waste be the thing that would kill him? But okay, all right, toxic waste runoff. So, yeah, you have this. He gets unmasked, and it's the shittiest, most unbelievably ridiculous looking makeup effect he looks like a melted fucking cave troll or a cabbage badge kid and if that's not bad enough you have really just silly dubbing of young boy jason saying things like Mommy, no! Mommy, no! I don't want to drown! Mommy, ah! Jason has never been lamer than this. L looking like a fucking melted cabbage patch kid. The young base. <laughs> can't even say fucking Jason. I'm so riled up. A young Jason voice dubbed over him. No, mommy, no! <laughs> Is he fucking Mr. Bill from SNL? No! Not Spot! Ah! Not Toxic Waste! What the fuck? <sighs> and you think, okay, it can't get much worse than that, right? No, it does. Jason gets engulfed with Toxic Runoff, pukes fucking water. It might as well be fucking day glow. And then at that point, he then turns into boy Jason for some fucking reason. What? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> I mean, when that happened, I, liter I literally was just like, what the hell was that? What the fuck was that shit? I mean, seriously. Jason gets <laughs> splashed with toxic waste and he reverts to a fucking kid? He's not the toxic Avenger! Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, this script sucks. It's bad. The performances by the cast aren't much better. You've got Jensen Daggett, who seems like a nice gal, but she has no on-screen presence. Scott Reeves, same amount of sc screen presence as Rennie. Uh, these two should never have been the leads of a film, let alone this movie. They just do they don't have any chemistry. They don't have any dynamic with one another. Barbara Bingham as Colleen Van Dusen. She was the one that I would say had the most charisma, but her charisma was just the predictable, tired, bitchy charisma that only goes so far. Peter Mark Richmond as Charles McCulloch. He was he was forgettable too. He just came across as your typical douchebag teacher. Uh Martin Cummins as Wayne. Uh Gordon Curry as Miles Wolf. I like Gordon Curry and I like Saffron Henderson as JJ, but they aren't in the film that much. BC Dupree was okay as Julius. I would have liked that scene where he fights Jason a hell of a lot more if Rob Head knew how to direct scenes like that properly. And Kane Hodder, he does the best he can with what he has to work with, which is a lot of shit and piss and all kinds of 
waste. I mean, he does what he can, but ultimately he's wasted too because it doesn't have anything to really work with. A lot of these kills suck. The, the direction sucks. Even the, the look of Jason isn't that great. It's the worst when he takes the mask off because it's just silly and completely daft looking. But... Even when he has the mask on, for some reason it's yellow. Like it got piss stained or something. Like, why does it look like it's stained with piss? Why is it yellow? I understand he didn't have a ma the original mask anymore because it got split in half. But the replacement mask, why, does it, why is it yellow? That's the other thing I don't get. Like, none of these other masks in any of the other movies were yellow. Why would a guy who's using a mask as a prank, why would the mask be yellow? And he's also wearing gloves for some reason. Where the fuck did he get gloves? Why would he need gloves? And he's always walking around and dripping snot and goo. I guess because he's been underwater for so long, but it doesn't really add much to the to the look. It just makes him look like he's covered in boogers. And that's not particularly that scary. And the music. God, this score is so irritating. I hate this score by Fred Mullen. Fred Mullen didn't do that great of a job overall with his bits of music that he composed for uh, part seven. So he, he did an all right job with the end, with the opening and end credits, but everything else sucked. So why the fuck did he get the job here to compose the entire film? His score is another reason why the film looks and feels as cheap as it does. Cause it sounds like something you would hear on a TV show from the 80s and the cinematography by Brian Englund yuck the editing by Steve Merkovich just really fucking awful just really excruciatingly bad editing to the point where there are times where it feels like it's confusing and it's not matching the continuity and it doesn't really do anything to enhance the scenes and the impact and the power of them. And it's the longest film in the Paramount series. It's a hundred minutes and it feels like 300 minutes because I don't give a shit about the majority of these characters, especially Rennie and her boyfriend. I don't care about this bullshit with the teacher and what's going on with him and Rennie I don't care I don't give a shit about this thing with boy Jason who keeps showing up in her dreams this is not a nightmare on Elm Street this is Friday the 13th and when Jason does show up he is the kills are lame and forgettable so why would I really give a shit about any of that either and then you have the finale which is just all kinds of cringe. Fucking melted Jason looking like a cabbage patch kid. And mommy, no! And turning back into a fucking boy. Now he's a real boy. <laughs> what is this? Bullshit. So, yeah, I know that this movie has its fans, but... I don't get it, but to each their own. I tried. I really did. Trust me. I even said that at the beginning. I'll say it again. I tried. I did. I tried to give it another chance, and it blew it. It blew it out my ass. So, anyway, I don't know what else to say about Jason Takes Manhattan, except um, thanks for watching uh, my review and as always, I'll see you later. See ya. Oh, it's so crappy. It's like a bowl of toilet waste. 
Oh, it's so cruddy. It's like dipping your balls in toxic waste. The darkest side of an ass is where this movie came from. It's a piece of shit and the worst film in the fucking franchise. Oh, the script is so shoddy. It's such a disgrace. Oh, the pacing is so plodding. It moves at a snail's pace. The darkest side of an ass is where this movie came from. It's a piece of shit and the worst film in the fucking franchise. Oh, the direction is so nasty. It's like watching Jason masturbate. Oh, it's so crusty. It's like it's come in your face. It's a fire that burns from an STD. It's the worst film in the fucking franchise. The darkest side of an ass.